Hello, Malim Fashi. So you are welcome to the program Konkosia Vision. How would you explain Konkoso to someone who never knew him before? Um, Konkoso is a um, parallel grassroots politician, simple, gentle, humble, community-oriented personality, a person who is willing to deny himself in order to provide his, for his own population, a very persevering and enduring character who has a number of friends as well as enemies, a true politician, a typical politician, a classical politician, and a practical democrat. That's Concosia. Concosia is a new political movement which is rooted in the idea of liberating, emancipating the youth from the clutches of gerontorical bondage. Uh, it is a movement that is focused on socio-economic transformation of the society. And it has its own aims and objective, which is built on its own priorities. The first priority of Concosia is education. The second priority of Concosia is education. The third priority of Concosia is education. Priority number four of Concosia is justice and equity. Priority number five of Concosia is leadership. Priority number six of Concosia is industrialization and agricultural development. Let's start with education, which is the first, the second, and the third priority. Uh, the grand commander of the movement, Konkoso, is passionate about education because he is conscious of the fact that it takes education to control deserts. It takes education to have control over sea and ocean. It takes education to live in the Antarctica comfortably. It takes education to overcome diseases. It takes education to control distance and space. It takes education to live longer, and it takes education to overcome poverty. That's why Concosia, as a political movement which metamorphosed into political ideology, has education as its first, second, and third priority. Priority number four of the Concosia is justice and equity. We, the Concosia fanatics, are working assiduously to ensure justice and equity in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nigeria has everything, but the leaders of Nigeria, the leaders of Nigeria, denied Nigerians everything because of lack of justice and equity. Because of lack of justice and equity, even though Nigeria is the most resourcefully richest country in the world, yet the most poorest country in the world. This is due to the lack of justice and equity. Because of lack of justice and equity, we have more than 40 million youth who are not employed. Because of lack of justice and equity, we have 80% of Nigerians who are in abject poverty. Because of lack of justice and, uh, and equity, Nigeria cannot be able to benefit from the resources it has to develop itself because of the problem of justice and equity. Tribal conflict is a reflection of lack of justice and equity. Armed robbery, kidnapping, banditry are a reflection of lack of justice and equity. Wherever there's poverty, there must be violence. Wherever there's violence, there must be lack of development. And wherever there's lack of development, there must be more pronounced poverty. The vicious cycle continues. And all these are hinged on the problem of justice and equity. Resources of the country are not shared justly. Few parasites are the ones having the monopoly of the resources of the country. That compounds the problem. So, the fourth priority is justice and equity. Priority number five is to ensure a leadership. We have everything but leadership. 
we are still working seriously to find a leadership for the country. Because of lack of leadership, that's why we have problems with justice and equity. We need leaders who are inspirational and transformational. We need leaders who are energetic, up to date, and in tune with their own environment. We need leaders who are sensitive and sensible. We need leaders who are altruistic, those who are willing to deny themselves in order to provide for their own population. Leaders who are selfless, leaders who are prodigal and frugal. We need leaders who are responsible and responsive. We need leaders who are always awake in order to create room and conducive environment for the population to sleep without any fear, without any trauma, comfortably. And we see that leadership in the personality of Rabbi Musa Konkos. We have seen it. He demonstrated that leadership in Kano twice. He was able to transform Kano, to change Kano. Kano is now changed. Kano is now transformed. And we like that transformation. And we are hoping that transformation, if given the opportunity, we are hoping that he will replicate that transformation as a leader, the head, the democratic icon of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Then the priority number five, which is from us, is industrialization and agricultural development. If we are industrialized, we'll be scientifically and technologically developed. If we are scientifically and technologically developed, we'll be economically powerful. If we are economically powerful, we'll be politically influential in the world. If we are politically influential in the world, we ha will have control over the world affairs. These are the vision, these are the objectives, they are the sole aims of Concursia. He has the plan. He has the readiness. He has the interest. He has the skills. He has the talent. He has the dexterity to overcome these challenges you mentioned. He has the like-minded followers, like me and you. When he was a governor of Kano, there was a Boko Haram. Kano was hit severely by Boko Haram. Yet, he was able to structurally transform Kano. He was able to socially transform Kano. He was able to economically transform Kano. He was able to politically transform Kano. So, he had the skills of leading under crisis situation. And he had the skills of overcoming the crisis, as he did when he was a governor during Boko Haram in Kano. Well, um, the present situation we are in, the most unfortunate situation in Nigeria, PDP as a party has its own share of blame. Had PDP not miscalculated in 2019, we will have an indifferent situation now. Had PDP not miscalculated in 2019 nomination of its own presidential candidate, Nigeria will have been different by now. The story is completely, will have been different. PDP still has an opportunity. And that opportunity could be the first and the last opportunity. If PDP abuse this opportunity, again, by miscalculating again, history and posterity will never forgive PDP. The present APC mess up. The present APC's maladministration. The present APC's blunder created a golden opportunity for PDP to recapture power. But that is contingent on the ability of PDP to think well when it comes to decision to nominate its, the candidate, presidential candidate. And let me send this direct message and warning to PDP. 
you miscalculate it. You miscalculate it 19, 2019. But you have another opportunity to calculate right 2023 PDP. And from our own context, from our own perspective, calculating right is deciding on concourse. He's the only politicians who has the support of the northern part of the country and who will have the support of the southern part of the country. Think right. Calculate right. Decide on Kwankoso. He's the only politician who has over 40 million registered, registered supporters, followers, registered, not unregistered followers. The unregistered one surpassed the registered one. But the registered one for over 40 million. If you fail to promote the candidature of Kwankoso, you stand to risk again the loss of power. And honestly speaking, if Kwankwaso is not the candidate of that party 2023, I, for one, I don't know others, I, for one, will not and never support the candidate who I think at the end of the day will be a failure in terms of winning election. We wasted our time previously. I cannot afford to waste my precious time again. So PDP, the ball is in your court now. You have the opportunity to, to recapture power. The present mess created by APC gave you that opportunity. If you miscalculate, your mess will supersede the mess of P APC. And people will go for the lesser mess by my own calculation. If you mess again, people will go for the lesser mess because they have no option but to go for the lesser mess. And allowing the APC to continue messing up in the lesser mess. So I am appealing to PDP. Victory. Victory. I assure you, if Konkosu was able to scale through PDP's nomination, no force on earth will stop us from recapturing the power. We have our plan. It will not. Then people will go for the lesser evil. The, of course, yes. Destruction. Stagnation. Confusion. That is that the future. As we are confused now. As we are stagnated now. As we are being destroyed now. Think of what is going on in Kasana State. Zamfara State. Part of Niger State. Part of Kaduna State. The whole of Northeast. Think of the abject poverty. Think of the lack of direction of the, and focus of the leadership. Allowing APC to continue means endorsement of all this, approval of all this by the populace. And that depends on who happened to be the candidate of PDP. If that's why I said it has the opportunity, and that opportunity could be the first and the last opportunity, the last this time around. And I hope PDP will, in their right sense now, seeing what is happening now, the abject reality now will be able to risk miscalculation. And if they do, I'm sorry. I think we have mental problem. I'm calling on Nigerians to support us, the Konkosia. We have plan, good plan. We have intention, good intention. We have skills, good skills. We have talent, practical talent. We have the energy, heavy energy, to inspire, to transform, to develop, to change the country for the better.